New car buyers arrive at a garage in South Wales. But the cars aren't here. They're 500 miles away in Germany, across three international frontiers. Collecting the new cars will take the customers three days. But the round trip of 1,000 miles should be worth it. Their new cars, in right-hand drive British specification, will be considerably cheaper than if bought here. They will be personal imports, but done without any worry, with a minimum of form filling. The entire process has been organised by an international car broker, the biggest in Britain. And tomorrow afternoon, they'll pick up 40 cars, the largest convoy ever. satisfied with this now. The only thing is, um, I don't know if they've arranged for a car from the garage to follow us with mechanics inside, just well, I, in case we I need a problem. I do believe that Valda will be taking the mechanic with him when okay. he calls us to Venlo. This has more to do with package tours than the motor trade. So Gaynor Reese is this group's courier, arranging all the travel and tickets. With her is Kerry Powell, one half of the car broking company. We'll meet his partner later. The company is ETL, early to late. <laughs> the bar of a Sealink ferry, 10 o'clock on Friday night. And most of ETL's clients don't even realise that their ship is slipping out of Harwich Harbour. Just the brave ones breathe the cold sea air. By now, there are over 60 people to collect 40 cars. Because when you buy an imported car from ETL, the price includes the collection trip but for two people. Many have brought wives or friends just for a short holiday. Only a small group travelled out from the garage at Pontedawe. Others met a second coach in London or went straight to Harwich. For at least some, the party lasts most of the night. And the regrets start before the continental dawn when the Princess Beatrix docks at the Hook of Holland. But at least they had a couple of hours in their first-class cabins. Through Dutch customs, with a minimum of fuss and the luggage on board, the coach hired locally heads off for the motorway. Why, though, are they bothering to make the trip at all? Why can't ETL buy the cars, load them onto a trailer and import them back to Britain? The answer is the common market laws. Anyone can import their own car, but that vehicle must be for themselves or a relative. And, most important, they must drive it on continental roads before heading for the ferry back home. Only then is the car classed as a personal import. ETL do bring back cars themselves for direct sale, but the documentation is a morass. The easiest and the most enjoyable way too is to go and collect the new car yourself. As the coach glides towards the Dutch-German border at Venlo, with many clients dozing, there's a certain unreal air. It is enormously difficult to buy a British specification car in Germany. The manufacturers are always obstructive, and often at least the threat of legal action is needed. So it can take three months for ETL to get the car, sometimes longer, although the order price is guaranteed. The customers can't believe their wait is almost over. Bit about what's going to happen when we arrive at Noyce. Mr. Dunbar at the moment is making arrangements for us all to go and have a little bit of breakfast. Are you all in agreement with that? <laughs> yes, that's good. Right, we can have about an hour, take our time over a bit of breakfast. We'll then be going back to the dealer where all your cars are waiting. Do you believe it? Oh. <laughs> right. You'll be able to have a good look at your cars. If you can see any problems at all with them, there are plenty of ETL staff around for you to come and have a word with. So have a good look. Anything you're not happy with, just come and let one of us know. Is that OK? Yeah? Everyone happy with that? So the reality has dawned. Within an hour, they'll all be picking up their cars. 
and the first of the paperwork and documentation is handed out ready. ETL prefer to deal with small garages, so soon the coach drives into Neuss, a town a few miles from Dusseldorf. But the company also takes cars from other towns across the continent, even from Southern Ireland. On this particular trip, everyone has come to collect either Austin Rover, Metros or Maestros. That means there's only one garage to stop at, S and S, owned by two brothers. It's a local garage, so its space is almost overwhelmed by the 40 cars, most of them the top-of-the-range MG versions of the Metro. It's an impressive but also baffling sight for the buyers. With around a dozen, sometimes more, of the same colour, the first worry is finding your car. Well, I'll give you all the paperwork, fill your forms in with you, and then you can just do it yourself Monday morning. All right? But you've got to get it done as soon as possible. <coughs> How long can we drive on those cars? Well, you're not, you've got to, by law, register your car as soon as you get back into the UK, as soon as yeah. it is possible, you know. You can... The Lewis hasn't arrived Oh, yet. that is the Lewis, okay. yeah. Glen yes. Those are the last so, four letters of your registration. Right, thank okay. you very much. Mr. Barron. Mr. Kerr. Yeah. Mrs. Barron. Where's H3 too? ETL handle the registrations of almost all the cars once they're back in Britain, unless people have a cherished number. Once the customers have found their cars, then the exhaustive checks begin. Everything is examined in close detail, far more than new car buyers would at a British garage. These are simply worried at the thought of getting a car from another country. It's a long way to take a complaint. But the Austin Rover warranty, in fact those of all manufacturers, are international. Any warranty work must be carried out by British garages, even if the actual car was bought abroad. Many buyers too perhaps can't believe the bargain, suspicious that there must be something wrong with such cheap cars. But there isn't. The cars were built in Britain only weeks earlier. The massive difference in price is caused by the gentleman's agreement amongst the manufacturers that, in Britain, cars should cost what the market can afford to pay. On the continent, with tough competition, the prices have to be cut. Happy with your car? Yes, I am, thank you, yes. No faults or minor points? Uh, none that I've found yet, no. Have you worked out how much you've saved at all? Well, um, I reckon I've saved um, probably about £600 on the cheapest deal I could get in England. And that's against fairly heavy discount in oh, the yes, United Kingdom? Yes, yes. I've saved about £1,000, I think. £1,000, that much? Yes. And that was after hunting around UK garages for, for the best deal? Yes, and um, personal imports too, being around on those. Because you could have, of course, done all of this yourself. Were you tempted to? Not really, no. <laughs> Such a hassle. Do you understand the travelling directions? Uh, vaguely, yeah. Uh, <laughs> You'd be just following the car in front. That's right, yeah. Uh, what car have you actually bought here? Uh, MG Metro. Happy with what you've got? Yes, very really happy. The town, no blemishes at all or minor points? Nothing at all, no. Have you sat down and worked out how much you've saved by coming out here to Germany? Yes, uh, 800 pounds. That's made uh, this trip fairly worthwhile for you, then? Oh, yeah. There's a difference between having a car and not having a car. You could have, of course, organised this all yourself. Would you have done that, or would you prefer to let a company like ETL uh, handle it for you? Well, I prefer to leave it to them. You know, it's uh, a saving to me and uh, probably uh, business for them. By early afternoon, the 40-car convoy over a mile of Austin Rovers, sets off along the main streets of Neuss. ETL staff are in their own vehicles, leading and amongst their clients' cars. At the rear is a fast German car carrying mechanics. They won't be needed. It's a simple drive through the afternoon German sunshine. <laughs>
Back at the German-Dutch border at Venlo, and the convoy fills up the car park. But has the drive along the German Autobahn been that much too leisurely? One or two people who are slugging back a bit who think they're driving old cars in the old days when engines were uh, roughly made and had to do 30 miles an hour for 1,000 miles or so, but uh, they soon come out of that. The Germans don't like hanging about on the Autobahn, do they? No, they go like 10. <laughs> and, uh, it's very easy to get a convoy split up, you know, under these conditions. The people out are out here to pick up cars. Uh, do you think they treat it partly as a holiday as well and enjoy themselves? Oh yes, definitely, they do. Um, it's a break. It's something away from the normal routine of life, isn't it? You know. And then the added unusual part of picking up a car as well. Oh yes, it's all something different. It's exciting, and you'd be surprised how many the customers want to come back and buy another car next year. <laughs> the other half of ETL, Jürgen Dembach, has done the paperwork. Ladies and gentlemen, we can move now. So, please hand them over to everybody. Okay, Mr. Tig. Le Bé. It's dark by the time the convoy is halfway across Holland, time for a very late lunch, courtesy of ETL. But while the clients enjoy their meal, ETL start work on the major documentation, ready to get the cars back into Britain. For the brokers handle all of the paperwork, the clients need do nothing. Even the import taxes and VAT will be paid. The clients don't pay until they're through. Jürgen, we're in a restaurant on the way home. Uh, the paperwork still doesn't seem to stop though. Uh, that is correct. Uh, the paperwork stopped actually only once when we are through customer max size in UK. Is that the hardest part of the operation, the sheer volume of the, of the work involved in the cars? Uh, it's not so hard because quite a bit of this job has been done and prepared by uh, my office girls already. It's only organizing it and sorting it out at the moment. How difficult would it be if an individual were to come in and start looking for a car then and uh, to handle this themselves? Basically, it shouldn't be difficult, but there are a couple of things which uh, you always have to remember, which a private person doing it on his own could just forget about, which causes problems then with the registration and uh, on importation with custom and excise. How, how do you find the actual officials, like the customs, uh, to handle? Uh, are they? Obstructive or they're no, very helpful? They are, they are very helpful. Uh, especially the ports which we are using. Uh, Customer and excise know us there and uh, we have developed quite a good relation with them. They know that the cars and the papers which we bring in are 100% correct filled in and uh, it works very well with them as you will see it tomorrow morning. From the sound of it then you don't expect much trouble ahead? That is correct. Less than an hour after the meal, the convoy is aboard a ferry, given priority by Sealink. And then guess where everyone goes, reluctant to end their weekend holiday. This too is the flagship of Sealink with a huge bar. But this time there's more caution. There's an early start on Sunday, as the cars are driven off just before dawn. Back on the dockside at Harwich, but this time everyone is driving in comfort with their luggage and souvenirs in the boot. Again, the Austin Rovers line up. Next weekend, though, there will be Fords, Vauxhalls or Renaults. ETL handle virtually every make of car, plus 20% off the British price. The importation, handled by ETL staff, is made simple. Clients need only sign a few forms, then finally hand over their banker's draft. Within 15 minutes, the first car is heading home. <laughs>